Måske vi vil låne Oh my guys. It is just another cold, gray, yuck, rainy, blah, depressing. Just another day on the collapsing planet here and the collapse of everything. And bugs in a jar farm where we have rolled into Monday. It is a just a lovely rainy day and Monday. That would be October 16th, 2023. <coughs> Halfway through October. And uh, I am counting down the last two weeks at Bugs in a Jar Farm uh, sitting here getting cabin fever in my little 49 square foot tiny house. And uh, just thumbing through the mainstream media, and, and, and guys, somehow, I don't know how, it might show up elsewhere in the Doomosphere, uh, th th this article <coughs> in USA Today this morning about uh, looking back at the uh, halcyon days of the eugenics movement when uh, they were involuntarily sterilizing people uh, earlier, well, back, back in the dark ages of the 20th century. And, and I, ha <coughs> I have a new term for the collapse, uh, procreative menace. Procreative menace was the official term that uh, they had to apply, vast majority, but not always, to women uh, before they were involuntarily sterilized. Procreative menace, <laughs> which is uh, obviously a procreative menace is any human being uh, with the ability to procreate. Uh, the procreative, what's the plural of menace? But anyway, I need to be real careful about, <laughs> about covering uh, stories of the procreative menace, but uh, there's plenty of stories about the procreative menace, uh, although you will never see the term procreative menace, which is what this two of the stories I picked out here, here from Salon, is heat is making our planet uninhabitable. Why isn't this the top news story around the world? Yes. And what they're uh, featuring here, I've already done, I've mentioned this in a rant, is this new study by Michael Mann and his buddies at uh, Penn State University talking about wet bulb temperatures. Let's just quote the uh, one quote from the anti-doomer himself, the king of the anti-doomers, the uh, apocaloptimist, Michael Mann, quote, it's a new abnormal and it is now playing out in real time. The impacts of climate change are upon us in the form of unprecedented, dangerous, extreme weather events. It will only get worse and worse as long as we continue to burn fossil fuels and generate carbon pollution, close quote. And it sounds like a real anti-doomer to me. And they wind up the story, our overheating planet, our overheating planet is without question the biggest news story 
in the world. So why don't we treat it that way? So we have this guy named Humpty Dumpty Tribe uh, actually showing up with two comments uh, to comment on the last two sentences. So this is Humpty Dumpty's comment to our overheating planet is without question the biggest news story in the world. Humpty Dumpty, our overheating planet is one small subtext and symptom of, quote, without question, the biggest news story in the world, which would, of course, be the fact that humans have reached plague phase overshoot, and we are systematically destroying the ecological foundations of life on this collapsing planet. Of course, nobody reading this comment, not to mention the person who wrote the article, will have any clue of what I am talking about, as they have never heard the term overshoot in their lives and probably never will. And uh, that was comment number one. And then answering the question, so why don't we treat it that way? This is Humpty Dumpty answering the question, why we don't treat our overheating planet as the biggest news story on the world. Well, besides the fact that it's not the biggest news story on the world. <clears throat> we do not treat it that way for three major reasons. First, half the planet does not believe in 50 years of science, as you will no doubt see in the comment thread to this story. Second, the corporate mass media that is responsible for making it the top story is completely dependent on advertisers selling products such as SUVs to the folks who do not believe the science. Third, there is absolutely nothing that anybody can do about it, and there is exactly zero will to do anything about it, if they could. hope that answers your question. But, uh, we're just gonna wind up with a story which I think has received two comments. Uh, I can't even remember if one of them was from, um, yeah, one of them was from uh, Humpty Dumpty. Uh, anyway, we will wrap up with the one of two comments to this story from the Independent over there in England. <clears throat> UK, that's the United Kingdom, by the way, could experience civil unrest due to food shortages triggered by climate disasters. The UK's top food security experts believe the country could face civil unrest in the coming decades due to climate-triggered food shortages, according to a new survey. Nearly 80% of the experts surveyed express their belief that civil unrest, otherwise known as the zombie apocalypse, is either possible, that's 45%, is more likely than not, 24%, or very likely, 10% of experts surveyed over the next 50 years due to food shortages. Shortages of popular carbohydrates 
such as wheat, bread, pasta, and cereal were identified as the most likely potential triggers for social unrest. The research published in the journal Sustainability published in the journal Sustainability surveyed 58 of the UK's top experts from academia, policy, charities, and businesses. Extreme weather events have increased due to rising average global temperatures, including storm surges, flooding, snow, and drought were identified as the most probable cause of food shortages and subsequent distribution issues. Experts have long raised concerns over the vulnerability of the UK's food supply, with around half the food consumed in Britain now being imported, including 80% of its fresh fruit, 50% of vegetables, and 20% of beef and poultry. A quarter of Britain's food imports are from the Mediterranean alone, which has been suffering from droughts, heat waves, and wildfires at record levels in recent years. The researchers from Anglia Ruskin University and the University of York conducted an in-depth analysis of the current state of the UK's food system, noting that the heavy reliance on imports coupled with a food system optimized primarily for efficiency rather than resilience poses a significant threat to the nation's food security. Quoting the report, uh, this is Professor Sarah Bridal, Chair of Food, Climate, and Society at the University of y York. Uh, well, where are you, Sarah? Uh, says there is a need for a fundamental shift in the way we approach our food system. Quote, Corona panic, Brexit, and the ongoing cost of living crisis have already exposed the UK to certain vulnerabilities. The food system now faces significant challenges. We are witnessing an increasing number of extreme weather events, many of which are driven by climate change. It is entirely possible that in the coming decades, extreme weather events will cause major crop yield failures across multiple breadbaskets. We need a food system designed not just for optimal efficiency, but also for resilience. Yes, the study also highlighted various factors contributing to this vulnerability apart from the worsening climate crisis, including ecological collapse. Hmm trade restrictions, financial crises, rogue AI, new pandemics, and animal or plant pathogens. It is the combination of these factors that experts fear might lead to catastrophic failures in the food system, potentially resulting in insufficient food to feed the UK population. Hmm. Uh, and all about what we needed to do. Yes, the year 2023 
is on track to be the hottest on record for the world. And this summer in the Northern Hemisphere was found to be the hottest ever. July was the hottest month ever recorded on Earth and likely the hottest month in the last 120,000 years. Science, scientific studies say these weather extremes will continue to worsen as long as greenhouse gas emissions keep rising and therefore controlling them is the only way. Controlling greenhouse gas emissions is the only way to ensure consumers are protected from future shocks. In a new report called Climate Impacts on UK Food Imports, the Energy and Climate Intelligence Unit said the UK cannot simply grow its way out of the food crisis triggered by climate extremes because to do so would create extra energy demand at a time when growers still rely on fossil fuels. We have two comments to this article on a planet of 8 billion people. Tommy, Tommy Tesh has to say rubbish, rubbish. That whole article, rubbish. Crops will do better with warming. Hmm. It is because they are manipulating the weather to stop it raining to or to make it continuously rain. A new word, democide. Democide, which I guess he means it is the Democrats, even though this is from England. It is the Democrats uh, who are manipulating the weather, you know, to bring on droughts and floods. And, uh, and crops will do better with more warming. And, of course, Humpty Dumpty is the second comment. <clears throat> I notice not breeding is nowhere on the list of solutions. Anyway, <coughs> this is my life on a, uh, on a gloomy Monday sitting around here talking to myself. But it is, uh, good Lord, it is a quarter to three in the afternoon, and I guess I should uh, stick my head outside of the tiny house door where it looks like there might be a ray of sunshine. So I'd better get out and enjoy my five minutes of sunshine while I still can before those damn Democrats keep making it rain. Bye, guys.